Kennedy Center. We've had better afternoons. 69-62, the Michigan Wolverines over the Maryland Terrapins. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Mason Viner, Bruce Posner. Bruce, we'll go with you. What did you see this afternoon? I saw the better team win. I mean, there was no doubt about it. Best player on the court was Xavier Simpson and uh, Rez Dacus. Rez Dacus. Yeah. Rez Dacus was incredible. Gave the fans a lot of hell, but, you know, they gave him a lot of hell. But they were both super. Those hook shots, right. you know, those hook shots were unbelievable. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. And we had a chance when we had a chance to cut into the lead down the wire could get a stop you can't get a stop what happens you don't win nope and you were saying they're letting the game get away under two minutes and uh, they were hoping the defense would come up with something where but... are the fouls at the end i don't know why they waited so long with the fouls uh, they were still why in the was game the big guy being fouled almost every Which time is tesky uh mason what did you see out there uh the better coach team won better situational coaching better end of the half coaching better end of the game coaching they just they win because of the way they're coached and the way they're made to play they play in the situation of the game they don't the way michigan plays they don't have any this is how we do it they let the game flow and then they decide how they're going to do it which is the way the game it's there is no set way to win a basketball game every game is different you, you seem extra salty today this one really got to you mason the better uh, team always wins, Mason. Let me tell you something. Well, that, that's not that's And they're not better. Right. And it's that simple. All right? They beat us by 30 last year. They beat us by how many up in Michigan? 13? 13. 13, but. And here they beat us at home by, by seven. seven. And we really weren't in the game in the last five minutes. We were barely no, in the uh, game. That, that's sort of. I'll give my take on this when we come back from break. Uh, wow. 69-62 Michigan over the Terps. We'll be back in a moment. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. I think you can. Now they're going to lose four. So now they're playing the first game. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know who they play. Yeah, we'll get, we're going to end up playing Wisconsin if we can't pull this off. That's if we win. If we win. All right. We might complain about the All right. Well, we'll complain about that later, but let's, let's get back to this. Three, two, one. Back here at, at Xfinity Center, it was a big crowd. Uh, it was a jump in place. It was fun for a while. And Maryland looked early on like they had it. They had it going on. It got away. End of the first half did not end well as Simpson drove for a layup. Came out, and you got back in this, and the offense stalled. When you look up at the scoreboard, they just turned the score off. We only had 40-something points with, with a few minutes to go. We scored a lot at the end. Offensively, they took us away from what we wanted to do. Bruno really couldn't get loose. Defensively, when they ran the pick and roll, most teams trying to get Sony open for a three. Michigan was getting players open for dunks. Now, I know they were great passes, but Simpson set us up. Simpson's fantastic. fantastic. You, you got to give credit where credit's due. The guy's unbelievable. But I have to tell you, I thought Sticks had a great moment tonight. Maybe his best of the year with the three straight buckets. And uh, Bruno is it seems like he didn't play well. It's still got a double-double, as always. Right. Um, and the six blocks were, were impressive. Six blocks. They Cowan, Cowan, you just, Didn't you, can't, you just can't win when you're 
At one point, he was one for 11 with a few minutes left. Hit a couple shots to bail out his numbers, but of course that doesn't mean much. And Mason's asked repeatedly, why, why is it run this way, just the way we do it? Sometimes it works. We still have 12 wins in this conference, 12 and seven. Yeah, but now. they've gone away now. Gone. Away. I mean, look at the opportunity they had the other night. Wisconsin loses a game that they shouldn't lose to Indiana, and you go out to Penn State and you lose. Yep. And then you come back here, and every important person's at this game. Everybody's here. And what do they do? They come out, and they have the same thing. They disappear for four minutes. When are you going to get a better atmosphere to pull you through those times? You're not. You're not here. Except it's the only home loss of the year. I mean, in the conference. In conference. You know what? We lost. We were outplayed. The other team was better. However you want to look at it, right. they were more ready. They took the challenge of playing in this place, and they rose to the occasion. Very, very disappointing. Wayne, how in the world are we going to win three games in the Big Ten tournament? If you play like this, you're not. I mean, uh, really, when you look at it, Maryland never has been a great conference tournament team. They really haven't in this one. Um, I mean, and you look at the conference, there's no easy game. You're not getting an easy game. If they were, if they, even if they had the double bye, they weren't getting an easy game. So. No, they were just avoiding a hard game. Right. Yeah. You know, but it is time, you know, we often get fired up after these football games. You just can't play like this. I guess it's time to get fired up after some of these basketball games. You just can't play like this. You've got to find a way when you're at home and you got this place bumping because it was there. It's not like we were completely outclassed. Maybe the better team won, but you sure could have, sure could have, would have done it. did have a great night. Ayala hit a couple shots. Just nobody. It's Sorrell Smith. I don't think. Did he score? I don't think so. No. He played more no, in the first didn't really half. Play much. You know, and you talked about Jalen Smith when he had five minutes in the first half, and suddenly with about 10 minutes to go, he showed up. Big time. Yep. When all said done, they lost. And, uh, you know, they got a game sat. They got a game on Friday that. You know, when you've lost games like this in a row, mm -hmm. you got to win. Well, you got to win. See, that becomes a whole other thing because Maryland, I assume, will still be ranked come this next know. week. I, I think they will. They're not dropping out from 17. It just won't happen. Well, you're not, you're, when but, you lose to the number seven team in the country, you normally don't fall. Yeah. No. So back to next week. You're playing against a desperation team. They need Minnesota needs that win for whatever chance they have. And Friday then, night. and then in the Big Ten tournament, because you're probably at this point you're out of that double buy situation. You're going to be playing most likely against the same situation. So these next two games, you're playing against desperate and more desperate. Well, they lost to Penn State. They lost to Illinois. So who's to say? Yeah, just beat Indiana. Indiana's getting hot now. I don't know who bit. they have to play, but yeah, Indiana's making a push at the, right. yeah. at the tournament. As as Bruce would say, there's nothing to be gained by beating up on this loss. Lacrosse loss today. Oh, what which a day! Really happy. I, I started this day off bad with that uh, 14 to 13 overtime loss, as the Terps were forced to play indoors in an arena that Notre Dame practices all the time. Maryland's probably never had a game like that ever indoors. It looked cool, though. It looked um, like a made-for-TV event. Yeah, sure, with the 400 people there. I mean, you know, I mean, it was ridiculous. But, it's, you know, they could have won the game. It's not like they sure. could have won. Absolutely. But nobody's going to tell me to, if it's 12 degrees outside. Right. It was 12 degrees here the first game. I mean, I don't know if, if Tillman had the option to, to not play it out indoors. No, it but I sure would have taken it. It is We're not going back there till April 1 again, I tell you, in two years. And Bruce will handle the cross schedule when we're done with this postgame show. Mason's going to go get the turgid postgame uh, comments in the media room, and we will see you on the radio on Wednesday night. Real quick, just on this lacrosse game, I don't want to belabor the point. You win 20 out of 30 face-offs. You win the ground ball game 36 to 26. You both have 15 turnovers. This is a recipe to win. Yeah. Usually. You know, Notre Dame had well, some I, really great I, mean, I didn't watch the game that's... closely. Danny Dolan only had seven saves. They Notre Dame was getting some good shots. Right. Okay. Much I, on the I, defense. I didn't watch it closely because I was on my way out here. Okay. All right. Just disappointed. The whole day was a disaster.
Well, and uh, well, we look pretty good, good for going through this. There the only you go. Good thing. All right, Mason, go get that post game. We'll see you on 1300 CBS Sports Radio on Wednesday night for Turf Talk. Good evening from Xfinity Center.